you are. And you can kind of like pick and choose like, okay, this is kind of who, who I am when you have it written down. Um, you can ask a friend, <laughs> hey, what am I about? Like, why are we, and you can ask like, why are we friends? Why do you like me? <laughs> why do you keep me around? Um, and you can get some attributes about yourself that maybe you wouldn't have seen. Um, also, my favorite tip, go shopping because you will figure out the things that you like, your style. You know, do you like things that are a little bit more flashy? Um, did you maybe just buy an all sequin silver glitter jumpsuit from Rent the Runway? Sorry, I did. So, like, find things that, like, speak to you. Like, maybe, or if you don't like shopping, then I'm sorry, don't go shopping. But um, I think shopping is a great way to kind of figure out your own style um, and what you like. And then, what did you say, Carolyn? Oh, the recording's in three parts. Oh, no. Okay. Um, keep a diary or a journal is another tip that I would give you guys, kind of similar to the brain dump. Um, but if you, if you have like a diary, you know, it has your feelings, your thoughts, your actions, um, and you'll, you'll get a great idea of kind of who you are and what you represent. Um, pictures, literally take pictures everywhere. That is what I do. Well, yes, it is annoying. And I think Ryan wants to kill me sometimes. It really is the way that I have consistent content is because I'm taking pictures all the time where, wherever I go. Um, and you always just want to have a like stockpile of, of photos because I've been there when you're like, Oh my gosh, scrolling through your phone. Like I don't have anything. Guess I'll just take another selfie. Right. So it's cool if you go out and even if you take a picture in your backyard or on your front steps, you know, something different. Um, I would also recommend looking on Instagram for like college student photographers, like in photography school or someone who just graduated. Um, or just photographers that are like, you know, DM me to collab or, you know, that's in everyone's profile. Um, that's what I did. And they're actually very cheap um, because they're just starting out their business as well. So I would definitely recommend trying to find a photographer if you're wanting, you know, like a little bit more professional looking photos or someone to help you like kind of direct you what to do um, and just to get some cool backgrounds. And then for backgrounds, um, I know there are some feeds, right, where everything is super consistent and cohesive and it just looks so beautiful. And you might be thinking, well, like, I don't have that in my house or like I could never do that. Here's my tip. Find three consistent backgrounds in like the world that you live in. You could find three. It could be the wall. So mine is this wall here in my office, there's just like this big spot that a picture doesn't cover. I use my ottoman because it has this really cool blue and white funky design. And then I use my marble countertop. So those are the three, like my pictures vary, but I try and keep those three consistent backgrounds. So I would say find three consistent backgrounds um, in your environment. You definitely have them. And then try and just sprinkle those throughout your profile because that is going to also give you your brand. And people are going to come back because they're seeing that there's consistency within your feet. So again, it doesn't have to be every single picture, but when you sprinkle it throughout, it, it gives it, um, you know, a more like professional look. And then just my Instagram process, I like keep a list before, you know, like I plan out what I want to talk about for the week. Um, and then I find a picture from that, or I will, look in my phone at a picture that I really like and I say, well, how can I use this picture to talk about like motivation or how can I use this picture to talk about the benefits of drinking coffee? Because I did that and I had a really cool coffee picture. I'm like, oh, how do I, excuse me, how do I use this picture? Um, and then I talked about the benefits of drinking coffee. So there's always a way that you can tie in like a seemingly weird picture um, if you give it some, give it some value. And then we're going to put it all together. So think about your layout, right? Do you want quotes in your layout? Um, do you not want any quotes? Do you want to do, do you want to crop your pictures? Um, I use the same size border around all of mine. Um, if you decide to crop your pictures, though, try and keep it consistent because I was doing this in the past and it was not consistent. <laughs> looked really funky. So 
you are cropping it, just make sure you have a really good app. Um, I use Afterlight and it's free. Um, but just make sure you're consistent if you're going to start cropping your photos. Um, and with the borrowed content, this kind of goes a, a lot of ways. So borrowed content in the terms of like um, if you're reposting some like a flat lay from some someone else, um, I would say keep that consistent. If you're if you're borrowing content from like another Instagram profile or if you took it from Pinterest or something like that, but also make sure to give credit to that person that you're taking it from. Um, not only because like it's just the right thing to do, but also it's going to boost engagement on your post because you're you're adding that other brand or company, so more people are going to see it, and it's just a, another cool way to get your name out there. So there, I said, don't be. I wouldn't be afraid of using borrowed content, but there is just a way to do it. Um, also, if you are seeing a post that you really like from another coach, and you like oh my gosh, I love this. I need it. <laughs> Obviously ask the coach, but I would say like, think about, read the post and see what they are talking about because chances are there's a way that you can say what they said better, like in a better way to serve your brand because what works for someone else is, and their brand may not like translate to your brand just think like how different all of us are right and we all have amazing ideas um so i think it is awesome to borrow content but there's a way to like really um what's the word i'm looking for to like maximize on the borrowed content but like flipping the script and like changing it to use like your funny words and your slang and stuff like that um and then I had something else to say. Oh, reposting. So this is another cool way to use borrow content for your brand. If you have a hashtag that you want to use, um, and Emmy, sorry, you're just the first person under my face, so I'm using you. But if it was like hashtag Emmy's vegan tribe and like all of her challengers use that hashtag whenever they post it on Facebook or Instagram, you can use their pictures and post it on your Instagram and say, hey, look what Emmy's vegan tribe is up to, like hashtag Emmy's vegan tribe. So that's another way that you will always have content if your challengers are all also posting and using a hashtag because you will have that still with like, it's still in your brand, which is super cool. And you don't have to think of anything because they already posted the picture, maybe just like change a filter so it matches your brand. Um, but I think that's another cool way to use borrowed content. Um, and then also like overall, is your Instagram, is your brand, like is it light, is it dark, is it airy, is it bold, um, is it like vintage, like there's tons of filters you can use. So um, just think of like, again, what you want your brand to represent and how you want people to feel when they're coming to your page. And super important, can I see your face? If it's like a front facing picture, obviously. Um, what's in the picture and like, what the hell does this mean? Like how, think when people are coming to your Instagram, scroll, 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 like, scroll, like, scroll, 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 like up, down, right? It's like super quick, but they wanna know like, how is this helpful to me? Why, <laughs> why am I on Emmy's page? Right? Why am I on Lauren's page? Um, Sorry, you guys are right underneath me. That's what I used to do. Um, so also I would say beware the selfie and the standard food picture because I realized I kind of, from what I was saying before, what I was doing was just being like super selfish and posting like just about me. Um, so if you're posting like a workout selfie, amazing, but how is that valuable to like anyone else? Like they're gonna be like, oh, I don't care. She worked out again. Cool. Um, maybe like give them a workout that they can do. You know, what what workout did you do and how can that help? Or like what are the benefits of doing crunches? What are the benefits of doing a plank? Something that's gonna provide value. When you're showing like food pictures, um, what's the benefit of that food that you're showing? Or what's an easy way that they could cook it in like 30 minutes or less? Um, or where can they find awesome recipes? Or you can guide them to your free recipe book. Something that's going to add value. Again, this does not have to be every single time, but you just want this uh, consistency within your brand that you're helping people with, you know, why they're following you. And then I just love this quote from Dita Von Tess. You could be the ripest, juiciest peach in the world, but there will always be someone who hates peaches. So, 
you know, you're, you could like have done all this work on your brand. And then someone's like, Oh, I hate that picture that she posted. Okay, cool. Then that person doesn't like you and it doesn't matter. And they are not your tribe and they are not your brand. So do not worry about offending anyone. Do, I mean, unless it's like, super offensive to like people in general, but <laughs> do not worry about, about offending people. Um, just be yourself and you will notice your brand developing. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about, and I'm sorry if there's children, cover your screen. My favorite quote, while I do not stand by the actions of Bill O'Reilly, I'm sorry, but I love this quote, fuck it, we'll do it live. Because everyone needs to be going live because it is just a super amazing way to translate your brand from like paper to person. Like you've been talking about all these amazing things, and people want to like see your face. They want to hear your voice. It's like the same thing when you're dating someone, right? When they text you and then they call you, are like, oh, this is what you sound like, right? It's different. It's different hearing and seeing someone than just seeing them like on the internet. So what is the benefits of going live, right? It's visual versus auditory. So see me versus hear me. Um, see me in terms of Instagram is just see me, see me, see me, see what I'm doing. And then, hey, this is my voice. This is what I'm talking about. Oh, I see something in the chat, but it's not popping up. Let me see. What did you say? Oh, yes. How you can prove you're not a catfish. Yes, thank you, Nicole. <laughs> um, okay, so super important about going live. Like, guys, think about a majority of this, the decisions as a consumer that you've made in your life. You probably saw a commercial or like you heard someone else, a friend telling you about it. The rules don't change because it's online. <laughs> You're the same consumers who are watching TV and like hanging out with their friends. Like, hey girl, where'd you get those jeans? Those are awesome. These are the same people that are following you. So yeah, it's cool to like post about it, but it's even cooler to talk about it. So it builds no like and trust. People get to know you, they get to like you, and they trust you because you're not just posting about it, you're talking about it. So yes, it's for the Chatty Cathy's, the Silent Sally's, it's for everyone. So if you're like, oh, going live isn't for me, it is for you. I promise that it's for you. Um, and if you're afraid of going live, I'm sorry to say it's not going to get any easier just thinking about it because let me tell you what's going to happen. You're going to like come up with this horrible vision in your head of what's going to happen or of what's not going to happen. And it's going to be completely not even close to the reality of going live. So it's for everyone. I would say literally just go out there and do it. And if you're scared, here's how you can like baby tiptoe your way into going live. Just talk on your Instagram story because it's like 15 seconds and it'll give you a little, um, like little sneak peek into what it's like to go live. And then after you do one, then do a full live video. <laughs> so how do you go live? It's really easy. Content and good lighting equals a live video. So you wanna make sure that people can see all of your beautiful faces. You wanna make sure like music is not blaring in the background, TV's not blaring in the background. Now here's the things, I would say that like kids are not talking in the background, but if that's your brand, then like totally have your kids um, there. Because I remember, what was, I don't know her name, if you guys remember, but she's like, she calls herself like the hot mess mom, but like she had her kids with her. And if you follow her on Facebook, like she has her kids around her. Um, so if that's part of your brand, like totally keep that in. Like if your dog is with you, I know Nicole, you have your cat with you sometimes. Like if that's your brand, then keep those things with you. Um, you always wanna make sure you acknowledge your audience. Hey guys, thanks for hopping on. Um, and as people are hopping on, acknowledge them, if they're liking, if they're commenting. Um, and then tell a story. So this is, I think, a really creative way of going live. Rather than starting with, so I did this um, last week. I wanted to talk about how to make a decision. Now I could have started with, hey guys, this is Alex, and today I'm gonna talk to you about making a decision. Right, well that's okay, but then the, here's how I did it instead. I remember three years ago when I first moved to Philly and there was this huge snowstorm. Are you hooked yet? I hope you are. But that is how you can like tell a story versus just going out there. So, I mean, it's 
not a long story short, but it was about me making a decision to quit my job and how this snowstorm like almost kept me trapped there. And that's what helped me to make a decision. So think about like the, the lesson or the advice you want to give. And then what happened in your life that you want to give that advice? Because I think it's super cool. Again, builds no like trust that you can talk about something that you've been through and then also offer the advice about it after. Um, also offer an incentive, you know, Hey guys, you just hopped on. If you make it through the end, the first person that comments is going to get a free packet of my, my favorite shakes, um, or whatever it might be. You can also start your store, uh, your live video with the secret. Um, you know, when it goes live, you're like, guys, I never told anyone this before, right? So you want to start off because people are going to that's going to be the first thing that happens. I don't know if I saw that, like I'm hooked. I want to watch what that damn secret is. So do not wait for people to hop on. Like don't go live and say, all right, just going to wait. Hey, Emmy, thanks for hopping on. I'm already gone. Like I'm not going to watch that because remember most your live videos, you're going to get most engagement when the video has ended. You get more you get more views after you're live than when you are live. So when people play your video while you're live, it may seem like, okay, let me wait for people to hop on. But when people are going back to watch that and there's all this like dead air, then it's kind of weird, you know? So definitely start your video. Once you see people hopping on, then you can, instead of, and I just saw this and I think it's great and I'm totally stealing it and you guys should steal it too. Instead of, like, oh, let me just wait for people to hop on. Introduce yourself. As you see people hopping on, instead of waiting, you can say, hey, I see um, Lauren, you just hopped on. Tell me where you're from. Hey, Christy, you just hopped on. What are you doing today? You know, so that's like a more natural way to stall than like waiting five minutes before your video starts to actually start talking because you'll lose views. Um, and then, yes, Facebook, use live video and Instagram with your stories. You can talk and enter, like weave that between fun graphics, um, between you talking um, for the 15 seconds. And then also you can go live on Instagram, guys. So if you've gone live on Facebook, literally just repurpose that content and put it on Instagram because all your Instagram followers are not on Facebook and all the people you follow on Facebook, not on Instagram. So don't worry about it. And I am done. <laughs> so I also, before you guys, if you have any questions, I just wanted to know, and I came up with this as I was going through, if any of you guys would be interested in kind of like a live video boot camp, and we can, like I would run like a Facebook group, and um, it would be a live video a day, like Monday through Friday. Um, because this is what I realized. When I go live once, I get like maybe 100 to 200 views. But when I go live three days in a row, that's one to 200 views every day. So that's like tripling the people that are seeing your stuff. Um, so yeah, just let me know if you guys would be interested in doing that. I would be more than happy to like host it and, and post like content and tips and give you guys feedback on going live just because I really love doing it. I think it's like my own personal talk show. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, let me know. And then questions. I'm done talking. Unmute yourself. I'm sorry if my cursing offended anyone. Does anyone have any questions? That was so awesome. I took so many notes. Um, this isn't a question necessarily, but it's something you like really briefly talked, like touched on. I know because yeah. you had like a ton to talk about, but yeah. it's something that you do that I love and I think everyone could benefit. But the way that you do your Instagram stories when you incorporate questions and answering oh. them, love it. It's super effective and it's never like I think that you do it in a way that makes me want to continue to watch your Instagram story instead of like watching like you know you just talking and talking and talking over the course of like five clips you know I think that loses yeah. people but you do this and do it in a way where you're continuously hooking people back in so I thought maybe you could touch on that yeah, definitely. So I'll use you as an example. So let's say you wanted to talk about um, like how people can sign up as a coach or join you as a coach. So I would use like a background and oh, I meant to say this. So guys, download the app Typo Rama, T-Y-P-O Rama, um, because they have an option to 
crop your graphics into Instagram story. So whatever you build in Typerama will fit like perfectly in your story. And it's like amazing. You can choose from millions of backgrounds or you can create your own. Like you can screenshot anything from Google and add an image. Um, so, okay, Lauren, you want to do coaches. So I would do like a background of birds or like an aerial yoga woman or something, hoops, poles, something that's you, right? And be like, hey, were you interested in what I do on a daily basis? And then from the graphic, I would do a live video, no more than three, because like you said, people are, are gone. So you can say, hi, I've been getting a ton of questions about you guys asking me what I do. So I thought I'd answer, you know, what it takes to be a coach. Next video you can do. All right. So as a coach, my main job is helping people to get fit or use your, I would say, use your mission statement with this um, because that's also going to hook people. If you use your mission statement, like my job is to help X, Y, Z with X, Y, Z, you are going to hook that one person to keep watching. Um, and then from there, you can say, stay tuned all day because I'm going to be dropping major truth bombs about what it is to be a coach. So then from there, that's your last video, right? That was only three. That's like what, 15, 45, less than a minute because that's our attention span. Then post your day, like what it is that you do as a coach. Post your workout, not all of your workout, because again, you want people to be curious. So post like maybe two or three things of your workout. Um, be like, oh my gosh, that was so tough. That 25 minute workout that I didn't need any weights. Love it. And then you can do another graphic about working out as a coach. Do I need to be fit to be a coach? Live video or not live video story of you talking. So you totally don't need to be fit as a coach. When I started coaching, I was at, you know, and then you do the video about that graphic. What type of time commitment does it take to be a coach? Story. Well, I'm an aerialist and I do pull and I do this and I still have time to make it work. You know, so Instagram story is super effective when you go back and forth. Because remember, Instagram is still visual. But when you go back and forth between a graphic explaining what people are going to get, why they need to watch your next story, that's going to help people to to continue watching you. And I don't know if you guys knew this, but you can check the settings in your story and you can see from one story to the next if how many people you lost. Um, so it's kind of just a good way to gauge your follower and your engagement um, on Instagram story. Yeah, and right along those lines, um, like what you do with it, that's really cool that I think is like noteworthy for everyone is like you do it throughout the day because it keeps bumping you to the beginning. Like, you know how you could see everyone's stories? Like, it'll bump the most recent stories to the beginning. So if you just, like, do all of those things, like a question and then the answers and a question and the answers and questions question and answers in the morning, anybody who goes in in the evening isn't going to see that. But anybody who missed it, like, if you do it throughout the day, anyone who missed it, you get bumped back to the beginning. So that's super smart to sprinkle it throughout the day like that. Yeah. And guys, like think of this as like your like kind of like circular, like in a store, your like coupons, like you literally can post whatever you want. Like you can do giveaways and in the morning be like, stay tuned for later because I'm giving away like a big old prize. And then don't talk about it until like the like the minute before you go to sleep. Because if you post it at like nine, then it's gonna be active for like a full twenty-four hours. And it's also really cool too, if people missed it, that's fine. They're going to go back and be like, hey, I saw that prize. Like, I missed it. What do I need to do to get it? You know, so your story, if you're using it effectively, it definitely takes a little bit of thought process, like what you're going to post, how you're going to plan it out throughout the day. And I would definitely be mindful of that. And like when you're sprinkling like your little crumbs. Um, but yeah, it's, it's like an awesome way to boost engagement and get people interested in what you're doing. It's a great way to battle objections. Um, and you don't even have to talk. I battled an objection the other day just from a graphic. I like wrote a letter. It was like, dear Alex, I love what you do as a coach, but I could never be that. And then I said, dear like future CEO diva, have you ever tried something new before and got good at it? 
And then you can layer pictures on top of each other. So it's like, like tying your shoes, like driving a car, like the job you currently have. Okay, cool. You can do this. You know, so you can be super creative in how you're battling objections too. It doesn't always have to be you talking because I think also people get tired of that. <laughs> they want to see mo both. They want to see you talking, but they also want to see um, like, again, your brand. So like use like super cool backgrounds and, and things that will stand out. So Carolyn, how do you lay pictures? Picks on top of each other. So what you're going to do, what I did for that story is, you know, um, have you ever tried anything new before and got good at it? So what you're going to do is save that original picture. And in the bottom corner, left corner, it says save. So then when you go to add your next story, you're going to save it's gonna go on top of it. Then you save that. Or like, I'm going to save your you have to save it. I feel like I go into my often the next day go in so I'm again super effective but throughout the day like I have dogs and like to go hiking and all that stuff so it's like themed days like where you feature your dogs and then like themed days where you feature like your outdoor like outdoorsy stuff and hiking um, and then the consistency is like your workouts, um, your PD, working your business, but that way you're not having like all of Christy at once. Um, but if you choose certain days to like feature like certain things that are like particular to your brand. Yeah, that makes sense. But I, at the same time, like, I feel like like what happened today, if I would talk about that tomorrow, I don't feel like I'm being authentic because it didn't happen. Yes, tomorrow. Like the shit that happened today with my dogs, I was just in that zone and I was like, I, yeah. have, to, like, I have to shift. Yeah, I'm well, that's fine. fine. That's I think it's I fine. On the daily. <laughs> just... Well, I well, I think then you just you have to be like super careful about like pick and choose what you want to share. Um, because you obviously with two dogs, they're gonna have a lot going on. Um, but I think like today, like a lot was going on with the shit on the floor. So maybe tomorrow, like you don't share a bunch about your dogs, like you touch on what happened from yesterday, like from today, um, and then like keep it moving. Because people will be like, all right, I get it, the dogs, the dogs, you know? So you do wanna like switch it up. But I don't think like don't be afraid of sharing too much. Again, like that's you. You know, that's that's your but like um like a trail picture or so I now because you can take the same color. Like I always use it's really you're this color around still use the same hobbies. How you read it? So like then talk about the features. Up by like psychology, right? And so the feature about this. So, so talk about just the the benefits to your specific target market. So, hey girl, I know you are so tired coming home from work. So am I. This amazing shake has boosted my energy and it keeps me full because it has like list two ingredients, not twenty thousand. Um, and then. This is why I love it, you know, but if you're more 